Hi guys, this is gsnom.com and I'm here with the unboxing of this special phone. It's called the ZT Axon 25G and it's the world's first commercial phone with a selfie camera under the display. Yes, it has come to that. We've seen a bunch of prototypes, but finally we have a commercial one. And this is what it looks like. So under the screen at the top side rests a selfie camera, which I look forward to showing you, to you. Uh, now the handset should be priced at around uh, something like 450 to 500 dollars. It's a huge device, its diagonal is dangerously close to 7 inches, which was the diagonal of a tablet a few years ago. The back side catches the light in an interesting manner. And the device debuted in September uh, in a global version and in Europe it came in December. Okay, so a quad camera, super high mid-range phone with the selling point being the Premier, the selfie camera hidden under the display panel. Now I'm going to explain this technology uh, for you a bit. It appears that there are two panels overlapped, two screens basically, and uh, one of them is a lower resolution and when you try to take selfies, this area here becomes transparent letting you take those selfies. So ZTE is a company we don't often interact with, we do interact with their gaming phones from the Nubia department. I think we should be more careful with this input. lovely wallpaper which is also dynamic and let's see what's inside the box some lovely high-tech sounds and here you can find the metal key used to access the slots as well as a pretty important i would say case because you don't want a huge behemoth of almost seven inches slipping from your hand this is it it's quite thick so it will protect the device it's silicone and it's transparent Inside the box as well, there's this bigger box here, which holds the charger. It's got an USB-A connector and let's see here, it promises up to 30, 30 watts of charging. And anything else? Nope, no kinder surprises here. Okay, so we proceed further and here we should find the cable. It goes from USB-C to USB-A hooks up to the charger or to your PC if you don't believe in wireless transfers. And here you have an adapter which goes from USB-C to audio jack. It definitely tells you that there is no audio jack on the device. And when I say audio jack here, of course, 3.5 millimeter classic audio port. We are done. That's everything inside the box. No headphones, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so there's that. And this is the beast that I have to show you. So I think it's time to reveal some aspects here. Now, if you're on a white background, let me turn down the brightness a bit. Uh, if you're on a white background, you're going to notice something interesting. Okay, there is a square here, which is a bit more pixelated. I'm going to zoom in so you can properly see it. So that's the square which is hiding the selfie camera. That's the exact placement of the selfie camera. That's just in case you were wondering. Now, why are big uh, device makers placing the cameras under the screen? The answer is simple. They want to get rid of the notches, the cutouts and the punch holes and make the screen more immersive with slimmer bezels and a whole viewing surface. In spite of that, we have quite a big chin here. Now, if you want to talk about the design, this is glass, beautifully shaped. Uh, we have a metal frame here, which is quite protruding, so it helps with the grip and glass at the front as well. Now, uh, we don't have a clear mention if we're dealing with Gorilla Glass or not, but glass plus metal plus glass equals a premium build. Uh, I keep mentioning that it's almost uh, 7 inches in diagonal. Well, it's actually 6.92 inches. At least you have a quality OLED panel with a 90 hertz refresh rate, which I actually want to confirm. So you go here and here we go, 90 hertz refresh rate. The resolution is uh, 2460 over 1080 pixels. And inside this baby, we have a familiar CPU, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G, which defined the super high mid-range segment in 2020. Octa-core 7 nanometer, and it's accompanied by, let's see, uh, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, plus microSD. Now, the battery may smell, uh, seem a bit small for a huge screen, 4,220 milliampere hour, excuse me. So, 400, 400 excuse me, 4,000. 220 milliampere hour with 30 watt fast charging, which on paper promises up to 60% charge in just 30 minutes. Now, even though we get some bells and whistles, we don't get the whole full package and full treatment. We just get a singular speaker here at the bottom. 
This panel holds three components. There's the selfie camera under the display. There is the in-display optical fingerprint scanner. And there's also the replacement for the earpiece. If you look closely, there's no slit here for any sort of earpiece. It uses a special piezoelectric vibrator to make the panel vibrate and deliver the sounds during your calls. Just like the Huawei P30 Pro and P40 Pro did. And just in case you want to know that about the selfie camera, um, it's a 32 megapixel shooter and as you can see it lights up when it's uh, becoming in use and as the screen area becomes transparent. So 32 megapixel at the front side for the selfies, while at the back side this module feels like the one you'd see on a Xiaomi or a Huawei phone. It includes a 64 megapixel main shooter uh, which takes 16 megapixel shots by combining the pixels f1.8 aperture. There's an ultra wide 8 megapixel camera as well and 2 megapixel macro camera and 2 megapixel bokeh camera. We have an LED flash here and also the promise of 4K 60 frames per second capture which is actually not bad and uh, also uh, you can take full 32 megapixel shots. You aren't taking any sort of interpolation selfie shots here. They're actually the full resolution ones. Now, as far as the connectivity is concerned, this device can deliver 4G and 5G, as well as Wi-Fi dual band, Bluetooth 5.1, GPS, AGPS, GLONASS, Galileo and BDS, plus it should also offer payments via NFC. At the bottom there's a USB-C 3.1 port, and here we can see the slot, which is accessible via the key you saw before. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, here you can see the buttons uh, close to each other, two volume buttons and a uh, striped wrist power button, easier to find in the dark. And of course, I want to check out the camera interface. Uh, okay, so it's pretty snappy and has quite a few options. And I was surprised by the quantity of video options. You can shoot 4K video, I have a special movie mode and a time lapse and slow motion plus vlog. In the more section, there is mono, macro, panorama, watermark, manual, document and 64 megapixels. Mono is actually interesting because it's not exactly monochrome. It lets you pick some of the colors. Uh, we have some studio lighting options here for the portrait, there is a night mode and bokeh is being kept separate from portrait uh, because it doesn't search for faces, it can be applied to objects. So in a nutshell, this is the innovation you're getting, there's a special area here at the top side hidden in the screen which hosts a selfie camera. Sadly, the rumors you've heard are, well, quite true, I have taken my share of pictures with this device and have to say that the selfies are a work in progress. We'll be back with more in the full review, but so far some of them have been blurry. More about that when the review is finalized. This is from gsnl.com. We'll be back with more soon. Bye bye.